Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on a Mark II. This is one of my more popular style rigs that I make and we're going to be focusing specifically on inserting perks and shaping some horns. It's more of a modern day banger hanger. It's got a little bit more aesthetic. I really like this style of perk because it allows me to decorate it in really any way that I want as well as allow to collaborate with other artists who do sculptures that I can put on there. Really anything. We're going to start off with some color that we prepared earlier using the stuff and puff technique. I took some slime and blue stardust both by Troutman Art Glass and I blew them both into a 38 millimeter tubing that I actually took and made a little bit bigger to give me more room room to get the glass in there and blown out evenly. Next thing we're going to do is move on and take a larger chunk off this tube that we will use for the neck. One of the more important points with this step is to really focus on getting that tube on there perfectly straight so that when you pull it down you're not having any crookedness in it that's going to affect you later. And as I was saying like this is an experimental color I don't know how shocky it is so I really really have been careful with it this throughout this whole process making sure that there's no stress in it or getting it too hot too quickly. Pulling that down in a couple different sections, really letting the heat soak in, keeping it nice and thick, letting gravity do all the work. Snap it off and polish the ends. Save that for later. Again, we're going back with that nice preheat. Better safe than sorry. As soon as I stuck this punny rod on, I knew the tube wasn't straight. So I went back in with a nice soft flame way far out, got it a nice even heat on it and used my marver to straighten it up. I really like the Maria mouthpiece, it's nice and elegant and simple, it finishes off the top of the piece really nicely. The more important things to think about when pushing these is to don't focus on the tube mass itself but once you get the glass hot and you start to push and you see it raise up, you're kind of focusing on that glass that's extended past the original diameter. Think of it as like a tire on pavement, kind of riding the flame underneath or on top, using your marver to straighten it out and keep it as even as you can. Again, checking to see we're on center. Flatten out that top side nicely. And then right before I finish it, I put a little air into it so that I know there's no seam that's gonna cause it to crack later. It was a little short. So I'm just going to go back and straighten it out, lengthen it a little bit. And I really like this bottom accent to these style necks. It's something I've been doing for a long time. It matches the can really well. I don't know if there's really a correct name for it, like there is the Maria mouthpiece. But it's used quite often by a lot of other artists, so I'm sure somebody's got a name for it. 
Just kind of blowing that out and backing it up into a small ball so I can drop the shoulder down. It was a little crooked, so I kind of straighten it back out with my paddle. Nice soft heat so it's not too soupy. Give it a little tug with your tweezers. Little fine adjustments. I tend to get a little frustrated when things take me longer than I want, but it's better to take your time than it is to rush something and end up with a product you're not happy with. Picking that hole nice and thin, and eventually it'll pop open. So this lip is pretty important to be nice and even and straight, not really for an aesthetic reason, but because it's going to join together with the clear can. We want that lip to be nice and straight, thick, ultimately really hot when we go to join them together. So take your time, little adjustments with the jacks, a little bit of flatten with the marver or your paddle. Kind of repeat that process until you're happy with what you see. Always keep your glass nice and hot. I kind of had to fudge with this one a little bit to get it where I wanted, but you know, sometimes that's how it goes. One of my favorite quotes in glasses, it's not about what you can make, but how you can fix it or how you can hide your mistakes. This next move is something I struggled a lot with, still do to this day actually. In this video, you'll see that the neck connection I wasn't quite happy with, so I had to go back and polish it up. And it really starts out with even prep. It's why I take measures to do steps like this, where I use the L-Marver to hold the piece steady while I hit it with my hand torch and get that hole as centered as I can. It's those little steps like that that, you know, really go a long way. Again, with our tweezer jacks here, we'll go in and flare this open. Using the same process we did before, we flare it, then I'll paddle it nice and flat, ream it open a little bit, and then repeat that process if you need to, but the trick is to not open it up too much, because you might have to puff into it later. A little bit of last adjustments. Get these two openings ripping hot so that when you stick them together, they immediately fuse and flow. Try not to twist or push or pull at first, just keep it nice and hot. Now, as I was saying before, I didn't really get this how I wanted it in the beginning, so I had to go back, condense it down, puff it out a little bit, condense it down. As long as your prep is nice and straight and you're really good at your hand rotations, you can sit there almost all day and work on that weld. If your prep's good the first time, it should go right. And we're focusing our heat on that shoulder there so we can push and drop it down. It's a shaping technique I really, really enjoy doing. Making a nice bubble and then dropping down one side of the shoulder to give that nice shelf. Again, checking to make sure we're nice and straight. Pretty happy with that. Did, however, notice a little bit of divot or wrinkles on the surface there from when I was pushing that shoulder down. So after I remove this handle, I'll go back and polish that with my hand torch. It's really important to just make sure you do it in small quadrants so that you don't get the whole area hot and it wants to slump on you. It's also a good chance to look underneath lip there and inside the can to check that weld. Looking pretty good so we'll move on and open up the bottom of our can so that we have a lot of room to insert the perk. I definitely found that when I first started doing these I had to go back and open it up again or even a third time because it just didn't open it enough. So really just get your tweezer jacks in there. Open that sucker up. Keep it nice and warm. Get it back in the kiln for a couple minutes while we get the final shape on our perk here. Kind of just getting this whole thing hot and gathering it back into a ball. using my Marver to kind of push things together. I always pull the ends of these really nice and thin 
Not so that it really thins out the top of it, but you end up with a more uniform shape at the end. Get it hot and use your paddle in the side of your marble there to puff it out. And then check to see how big it is. Looks like we nailed it on the first try. I mean, I've been making a lot of these, so I, I just know kind of the shape to go for. I've even gone as far as having a perk on my bench that is roughly the size that I usually have them to be. And then I just grab that really quick, check it with any can that I'm working on, and then I can say, okay, this one works well. I can set it on my bench and then make that perk exactly that size. So yeah, you just kind of use your marver and you'll puff into it, paddle the top and it squishes it down to a nice donut. I'm gonna make some horns for this perk. This first style of arrangement I'm gonna show you is gonna be more symmetrical based. So we're gonna have three evenly sized horns and kind of a triangle shaped pattern as you saw before. I gathered this rod up earlier because I like to have a larger mass to work with and then just pull down smaller sections if I need to. It's all about the prep, man. Keeping your prep prepped up so your prep is all prepped. <laughs> I love that. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on here and we're going to pull down these tapers here. So we've got roughly two evenly shaped horns. There's always a little bit of waste in this process, but, you know, it is what it is. Grab another punty and kind of match up those tapers. Split them and then trim them down to size. And we're going to go in and place our first horn kind of just over the edge of the shoulder of that disc. Not dead center, but kind of right around the side there. Going in with our hand torch. This one won't be bridged up, so you just kind of got to go a little slower so it doesn't droop around on you. Get that second horn preheated and stuck on there. And just eyeball all these arrangements. Muscle memory is kind of a big play on this, but after a few tries, it shouldn't be that hard. I've heard of people taking some small clear dots. You place the clear dots first, so that'll give you a, a reference or a guide to look at. I've also found that using the negative space actually around the horn when you're looking at it gives you a way better reference on what is straight versus trying to stare at the horn and look and see if it's up and down straight. So yeah, just kind of get those horns on there, the first two on there, bridge the second one up, butter it in nice and good, give it a nice reheat, and go in for that third attachment. Again, we're kind of using the negative space as I look past the horn I just attached, seeing where it's divided up in between those two horns. It's nice and centered. Bridge it up. And go in and finish that third weld. Once you're done, you can remove the bridges and we'll get them all shaped up. And there's lots of different ways you can pull a horn. I find that the best way to do it is in multiple steps. Don't really go for the full shape all in one, especially when you're doing symmetry because it's really hard to do the same motion right next to the next one. So if you do them in smaller steps, then it makes it easier to make little adjustments on the next one. So I'm gonna pull it down into like a, a smaller taper there. Just kind of eyeing it with each time. Trim a little bit of excess off if you pull it too much. Once I've got these like rough shapes, I'll go back and do the final pull on all of these tips. The smaller connection you have to the tips of these horns while you're pulling them, the more of a gradual taper you get and the smaller of a breakoff point will be too, so there's more of a pointed end. It's really all timing too. You don't really want to heat it up and grab it right away. You want to almost wait a second so it stiffens just a little bit, but if you wait too long, your punny breaks off and you got to reheat it. Now we got those how we want them. Adjust it inward. We're gonna go in and blow out some spots to where we'll attach a small tube that will actually connect to the side wall of the can. And we'll blow out the three holes for our perk. I 
like to remove a lot of glass to this opening so that when I add glass to it for the connecting tube, it doesn't get too thick on us. Now we're just going to take the end of our color here and pull down to like 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter cups is what I like to call them. Open-ended pieces of tubing on a punty. Then I'll trim the opening out and get it nice and even, which will end up connecting to the perk. getting in there with one blade of our tweezer jacks to open up that hole. I don't have anything to bridge to that's convenient so we'll just go ahead and four corner this weld. Heat a little bit up at a time, puff it out, wait for it to cool then move on. It's really more important to just not blow it out too much because it's such a small area. We don't want to change the shape of this weld. It keeps it nice and small and looks more aesthetically pleasing. A nice preheat. Pop those three perk holes. And we're going to put a punty on that tube end, kind of wrapping it around our work, getting it centered so that we can move the handle. You don't have to insert these perks on a punty rod, but I prefer to with the holes for the perk already popped. It makes the weld go a little bit quicker, and I don't actually have to pop the holes inside the tube. But just get it as centered as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remove your handle. Get rid of that excess glass. And I'll grab some of this elixir, the same colors we use for the horns, and I'll put it on the bottom to act as a little bridge. It's one of the main reasons I use these style of perks over your traditional ring seal down stem is because not only is it welded to the side of the can, but it's also reinforced at the base. I think that really helps make the piece sturdier so that the intricate stuff you want to put on top is a little bit safer, take a little bit more of a beating. So yeah, get our punty on the bottom of that bridge and I've pulled it a little thin so that it's easy to remove later. And we'll start trimming down this tube so that we can size it up and make it just right to fit in our can. The trick is to remove little bits of tubing at a time so that you don't make it too short and at the end you start to trim off actually a little bit at an angle so that it kind of matches the shape and curve of the rig. That's a pretty important step I think because it's going to make again just a little bit less glass at that weld so going in to butter it in and do the finish the weld you end up just things go faster. Get a nice heat to both of these. We're gonna go in, resting the opening of our perk on the side of the wall, right where we want it, and then use the torch from the outside to heat it up, pushing against the side of the wall, and then pulling back to get it centered. And then using that punty as a bridge, we're gonna bend it over and weld it to the side of that opening. This is important to do relatively fast because you only have so much time before that weld wants to crack on you. So preheat it, go straight in with your hand torch. And I will grab some four mil and I'm gonna pull away a generous amount of glass, not too much to where it wants to open up, but just pretty thin. Think of it as that glass that you add to the inside is what you're removing from the outside. Go back in with your hand torch, kind of looking inside the can to look at that weld, watching the smooth transitions. Hold it all directions, up, down, left, right. Keep that glass all in one spot. Giving another preheat to this, we'll remove our bridge. There's actually an earplug in my end of my blow tube so that when I do this trick to remove all the glass for the bridge, it doesn't 
heat up my hand. Remove little bits of glass at a time so you've got it just right. These end up being maybe a quarter of an inch long. It's about the gap that I give myself. When first doing these, I recommend to give yourself a little bit more room. Make a larger vessel so you've got lots of room to play with. And when you close these bottoms up, don't remove too much glass, otherwise your base will get really thin. And just heating that up, letting it fall back on itself, trying not to spin too quickly so that it gets too thin. You just take your time. I like flattening the bottom like this at first because it allows me to look straight down at the weld to know how close I'm getting. And even going as far as to get right on the side of my torch here, so I can look straight down at that weld. And I've got air connected too, so I'm allowed to kind of suck back in when I get it hot and puff back out when it tags down on that perk. I think this really helps give it, make it stronger so that if you were to set it down on a hard surface, it's not flat, it's a little convex. And then we got it. Stay tuned for episode two where we're going to put a joint on this thing and add some attachments. Thanks for watching, guys. Really happy to be a part of this. And shout out to Can of Cam for putting this all together.